Okay. Um, just want us to read um, the one John chapter one and uh, a few verses there. One John chapter one it says, uh, "That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life." The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. Okay, verse 3, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. Maybe we just look at verse 3, you know. So it's a beautiful way, uh, I mean, uh, beautiful writing of that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen. So John is writing about his experience with the the word, you know, the, the living word, which is Jesus himself. And he's saying, you know, that we have looked upon, our hands have handled, etc. So he's saying uh, in verse 3, that we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you may have fellowship. You know, the, so the true end of declaring and leading people to Christ is that the ones who do not have that relationship might have that fellowship, right? Saying that you truly, that you also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And he says that these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Okay, so... So life with Jesus, you know, we know that there are trials, there are tribulations, there are difficulties and challenges. But at the same time, it is so that we might have fellowship and in fellowship with Jesus, with the Lord and with each other, that our joy might be full. So you know, we know that, you know, the, the work or the fruit of the Holy Spirit produces joy, right? So... The God's work in us produces joy. His fellowship, when, the, when we fellowship with the Holy Spirit, there is this fruit which is being developed in us, which is joy. So John is saying, you know, this is what we have seen and heard. It's so much of conviction. We have seen, we have heard, we have touched, we have, you know, this is, this is out of our experience that we are sharing with you that you might have fellowship and that your joy might be full. Okay. So, in our, I was thinking, you know, in our in our ministering, in our sharing, in our, uh, you know, communication of the word, that we we should have the same experience, right? That we have seen what we have heard, um, and that we have walked with, we have communicated with, uh, or fellowshiped with, um, that we want to share, and and we want to share so that your joy might be full okay that we know joy is irrespective of what is happening around us respective of the env environment around us there is that we can have joy inside of us it doesn't depend on you know circumstances and situations and he's saying that we, we do this so that you may have fellowship and that your joy may be full okay so several things for us to take away and and for us to <clears throat> You know, in our ministering, also to change and uh, and say, you know, that we have seen and heard, what we have experienced, what we have walked with, you know, that is what we want to share, and with this objective, right? Okay, so let's let's pray and say, Lord, uh, you know, I want to minister in the same way, right? Um, I want to walk in the same way, and um, and I want to have these as the objectives of ministering, right? Okay, let's let's pray, Father. We uh, we just want to thank you, Lord, Lord, we. Truly, O oh God, um, as we read through these verses, God, as we see the way in which, Father, Lord, the early church or the apostles fellowshiped with you, Father God, to walk with you and um, to what they have experienced and seen and heard, Father God, they declared. And so, God, may it also be with us, Lord. Lord, even as we walk with you, even as we journey with you, Father God, whatever things, O oh Father God, that we that we have seen and heard, O oh God, may we declare it uh, with all confidence and Lord declare it with joy Father God so that 
people may be drawn to have that union and that fellowship with you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, let it not just be with Lord, people just getting saved or, Lord, um, people just being part of something, Lord, some church, or, but Lord, let it be that uh, so that they might have fellowship, this koinonia with the Lord of heaven and earth, with the living God, and so that, Lord, each one's joy, O oh God, might be full, O oh God. Father, we thank you that this is your desire and this is your heart. And uh, yes, Master, enable us to do the same, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' master's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, fine. That's, um, so we've been looking at a very important part of uh, you know leadership and also um, the ministry and organization, right? So we were looking at the importance of vision. Okay, what is vision? And we looked at um, some of the attributes of vision. So we looked at the uh, you know how we need to uh, we need to state. I think that's where we stop, right? State or we, how we need to both one communicate how we need to communicate our vision. So vision needs to be communicated at the right time, and vision needs to be communicated so that people who are part of the part of the work, you know, part of the team, will also understand it. So vision, you know. Cannot be just in your heart, and uh, you know there's a right way to share it and a right time to share it. But people who are part of the work, part of the team, definitely need to know the vision. Uh, and the reason being, you know, once they know, they will also work towards it. Right? They will also journey in the same direction. All the doubts, clarifications, everything will be you know set right, and also that um, you know they'll be able to put in that work and effort. Uh, sorry, put in that effort in order to go in the same direction. There'll be less of pulling in different directions because you've communicated the vision. Right? We looked at three things, right? so that people would know the vision, people would own the vision, and also people would be enthused, or people would be zealous, passionate for the work because of the vision, right? Okay, so we need to communicate the vision in many different ways, okay? So if... Uh, you know, this is the vision statement of the ministry of the uh, or the organization. It's good to communicate it in different ways, right? So, and typically, you know, uh, if you look at uh, APC, you know, um, we said okay, every time the church gathers together, which is on a Sunday service, right? Uh, we will we have to make it a point to communicate the vision, okay, or to uh, reiterate the vision, okay? And and you know when that happens, right? When does it happen? Yeah, uh, during the announcement, right? Uh, so that's the first thing which we, you know, which comes up in the announcement. It's sometimes it's uh, you know people switch off during the announcement. You know now, okay, now is a break. They're, they're they're drinking water. They're going out, and you know sometimes they do that. But then we found that okay, that's the best time, right? We can actually share um, or reiterate, remind people about the vision. This is the vision, right? So somehow it just gets in. Okay, so uh, creatively, you can think of different ways to communicate the vision. Maybe it's a, maybe in a team meeting. Maybe in um, you know sometimes when we have our um, you know recently we had what we what we call as a VIP banquet. Uh, some of you have been part of it. I think you know what we do is uh, let's say people have been part of church for some time, five months, or four or five months. They've been coming regularly, so they've been coming only for the Sunday service. They come Sunday service, go. Okay, so recently they started coming. For example. Now they would want to, or at least the you know we want to communicate to them, and saying okay, there are ways by which you can get connected to the church. You know uh, there are ways by which you uh, you can serve, and uh, of course you know there are all these different ministries that you may not know of because you are coming only for the Sunday morning service, right? So along with that, what we also try and do is you know have something like a so we, this, it's a typical meeting. Which we had last, I mean, uh, day before yesterday. Uh, so along with that, the vision is also communicated, and uh, we just do it like a game, right? So it's not, uh, it's like a game. So sometimes it's like um, we give people pieces of paper, and uh, you know, pieces, and each piece of paper has one word of the vision in it. So they need to put it together. You know? So it's in a packet. They're given different pieces of paper. So they need to put it together in you know, a salt light and 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 things like that, 
right so the first team which puts it together and puts it in the proper order you know get some chocolates or something like that so um so in ways uh, creative ways you communicate the vision and the reason is that people need to, uh, your team or your church or the ministry needs to understand it and uh, yeah the other thing that we see here is um, you know just a minute sorry i'll just share this screen i forgot to do that the other thing that we see the fifth one that we see is that uh, it's not import it's not uh, enough if we communicate the vision once and like you know how you've seen it's been happening the vision needs to be repeated that communication needs to be repeated okay not just once but over a period of time okay and the reason is this that we as human beings we forget okay like one of one uh leader he put it like this one of the you know senior pastors of a church he put put it like this he said that vision leaks okay vision leaks it's like having a bucket full of water and that bucket having small holes okay the walls of the bucket have small holes the bucket is full but there are these tiny holes through which the water is you know uh, is just flowing out so uh, over a period of time the bucket is empty so which means that vision leaks so we need to repeat we need to pour back in right and uh, so that it remains um uh you know we remember it and we don't forget it okay okay so we looked at mission and we also tried to write something about um, you know uh, us you know the mission our vision for us ourselves right so what is a mission when you say i'm going on a mission what does that mean it's a task it's an assignment right uh some steps okay so mission has this whole aspect of action okay so what do i need to do vision is you know what is the big picture who do we want to be who are we right and why are we here so mission talks about it's about action okay what do i need to do okay so um if you look at the notes page 9 it says um, uh, mission statement if you have a statement of mission it clarifies what do you do which is the ministry activity for whom do you do it like who is the target group who are the people and how do you get it done right so what do you do for whom do you do how do you get it done so how would mean some some details that you go into okay so um again using apc as an example the mission statement would be all people church disciples and equips believers in the word and the spirit to mature them into christ likeness fulfill god's purpose for their lives and to have influence and impact for god's kingdom okay so you see it's it's slightly different from the vision right vision is to be to be salt and light right so if you look at the mission statement mission statement it says okay um discipling equipping uh Um, to maturing people to Christ likeness, to fulfill God's purpose. You see, it's different. It's all action, right? Action oriented. What do I need to do in order to be salt and light? What do I need to do? What does the church need to do, uh, or what is it the church is going to do in order to be a voice? Okay. So those are the. So that would become part of the mission statement. Okay. Then. the third thing is in order to carry out the mission and to fulfill the vision now first of all do we understand the difference between vision and mission yeah okay so it, there will be some overlaps because that is also you know present mission is also present and futuristic looking you know this is what we want to do but it's it's different and the third thing is that we need to understand that in order to fulfill the vision and carry out or action the mission uh you know daily we need to have goals okay we need to have goals what are goals then what are goals things that we need to reach sorry what is target okay so these are good words yeah what we where we need to reach it's like a finish line like if you're running race uh, typically in a football it's the goal post the whole team is actually 
are wanting, okay, we need to score the goal. We need to reach there, score the goal, right? So, uh, so goal, goal, we can say are objectives or like, like you said, targets, okay, that we need to, specific things that we need to do in order to fulfill, in order to pursue the vision, right? Um, so, for example, if we say, okay, equipping people, these are some goals. Um, then outreaches, evangelism, discipleship, church planting, missions, you know, these are specific goals. And uh, so you're breaking it down. Okay, this is a big picture. The mission is, these are the things that we need to action out or, or take action in order to complete. And you further break down and we have goals, right? So, um, so when we're talking about goals, we know that we need to, um, um, you know, like we need to have pl plans in order to achieve the goals. Okay, so we, we break it down and say, well, this is the goal for this year. So it has a timeline. But in order to achieve those goals, we need to have a plan. Okay, so it's kind of broken down. Now, a plan. So its plan is an activity, it's a process where we have a set of steps. Okay, these are some things that I want to do in advance you decide, right? This is what I want to do in order to reach these goals. Okay, so if it's church growth, if it's evangelism, if it's discipleship, if it's equipping a believer, okay? Equipping a believer is, well, let's say that's a goal. So you have a plan for that. How am I going to equip the believer in the church? Or maybe the church has 50 people or 100 people. Okay, how are we going to equip? Right. So you have a plan. You think about it. Okay. Now I have 52 Sundays. In 52 Sundays in 2024, um, maybe four have already gone. Now how do I equip the believers and move them? To maturity or move them to Christ likeness. So as a leader, you we have to start as leaders, we have to think like that, right? Um, so it can't be like, okay, this Sunday I, I just come and take switch on the mic and then I decide, okay, now I will do this. No, we have to plan ahead so that we can prepare um and, and do it. Okay. So uh Proverbs 426 very beautifully puts it, it says, ponder the path of your feet. Okay, so this is where I'm going. This is the path. So he's saying, ponder the path of your feet, meaning think about it. Where am I going? Where is this path leading? And is this the path that I want to take? What path should I take? You know, all those questions. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. What does established mean? Made strong, made firm, made sure. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. So, so planning is something, you know, practically when you look at it, it helps us to make good use of our time. Okay, time is a resource. This one hour will never come back. We know that. Right? We'll have another set of hour, but this one hour will not come back. So if I plan how I'm going to spend that one hour, you'll spend it well. Right? So it, it helps us to make the best use of our time best use of our effort and all our resources resources could be money resources could be skill resources is you know our ability so if we plan we will we will be able to uh, you know use it well use you or uh, you know, maximize the uh, all the resources well right so um, you know some of the things that we see is that if if we don't plan you know, we will also look further when we also talk about organization, right? If we don't plan, then someone else will plan for us. Like if we don't plan our time, if we don't plan, then we will give in to someone else's plan, right? So it could be, it could be urgent. Something somebody says, "Hey, I want this done," and if we have if we have not allocated that time and the resource already, if we've already not decided, then we give in to someone else's plans and uh, things like that. Okay, so in order to achieve goals, we must have a plan, and that has specific objectives and a timeline. Okay, uh, Proverbs six, 
very strong words, six and verses six to eight. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Right? Sluggard means lazy person. Right? Go to the ant, consider her ways, and be wise, which having no captain, overseer, or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. So, so what the ant is doing is, um, I mean, by nature, how God has created, has that inbuilt nature to go and uh, forage for food and uh, collect when the, when the weather is proper, when the weather is good, and store it for a future, right? So Proverbs saying, Proverbs is the writer of Proverbs saying, okay, go to the ant, Consider the ant. This is what the ant does. The ant is actually doing something for the future. right? It's preparing for the future. It's actually saving for the future. So consider the ways. Okay? So, so when we look at planning, planning is actually preparation. Planning is preparation for what is ahead, what you want to do ahead. It could be, you know, it could be for the day. It could be for tomorrow. It could be for the week. Irrespective of how big or short the, the time frame is, planning is preparation for it. Okay, so yeah, so planning can be short term. It can be a daily, weekly, monthly, annual thing, or it can be like, you know, five years, ten years, right? So we come to this question, you know, is it okay to plan, or, or the question is, is it right to plan? Okay, because uh, sometimes we might have that conflict in our minds, you know, why should I plan? Because I'm, huh? Yeah, God is leading me, and He is there to lead me every day, daily, right? So why should I plan? Okay, um, and so certain scriptures are used, right? Uh, one such script, scripture is Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six. Um, so where the Lord says, "Hey, don't worry." In modern terms, just relax, chill, you know, chill, relax. Why are you worrying about food? Why are you worrying about clothing? Why are you worrying about shelter? Just relax, right? And of course, songs have been written about it, and <laughs> you know. Um, but the thing is, the context is this, right? Uh, Matthew six twenty four to thirty four. Uh, the verses are there in the notes. But Christ, the Lord says, uh, uh, maybe four times, He says, "Do not worry." Okay, do not worry. He's talking about being obsessed with or being uh, uh, kind of trying to serve two masters, God, God or God of wealth, Mammon. But he's saying that um, in all these verses, verse 25, 28, 31, and uh, again, 34, he's saying, do not worry about certain things. First, he says, do not worry about your life. Secondly, do not worry about clothing. Thirdly, you know, do not worry about things like, okay, what do we eat? What do we drink? Then he's saying, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Okay, so, so is there a, uh, the thing is, we can conclude saying, okay, I should, I, if I'm not to be worried, then I can conclude by saying, so I will not be thinking about it. I will not prepare about it. I will not even work for it. We can come to some conclusions like that. But the Lord is definitely not talking about not being prepared for it, not you know, laboring or working. He's just saying, don't worry about it. Okay? And the word used there, worry, is don't be preoccupied so that your mind is not able to focus on anything. Now, worry is that. And the picture, the Greek word used there, merimnao, which means your mind is, you know, it's like uh, something is cut in different pieces, right? It's like you're preoccupied about several things. Your mind is occupied with several things, all these needs that you're not able to function normally, right? It's where you want to focus and do something, not able to do. So that is why the Lord is saying, do not worry about it. Okay. So he does not, you know, so it's definitely, you know, wrong to worry uh, about all these things. And these are all legitimate needs. But the Lord also gives a, uh, gives a solution, right? In verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Right? And if you look at the rest of scripture, the living word has actually, you know, quickened by the Holy Spirit, you know, all these other things, the verse that we just read, right, go to the end and study, 
and uh, study her ways and do it, which means the ant is actually preparing for the future. So, so we cannot conclude saying do not worry means do not plan or do not worry means do not work for it, right? So that's the thing. So it's not uh, it's not a you know unscriptural thing to plan. Okay. Then the other thing is also what we find in James chapter four, another scripture, James chapter four thirteen to seventeen. You know. Uh, where James says, uh, come now, you who say tomorrow, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell, make a profit, whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. Okay, So all this vision and planning, so sometimes we can conclude like that. What is this? You're talking about five years, 10 years, 15 years. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. So we can say, okay, so let's forget all that. Forget all that planning. But let's read through. You know, it's, says, what is your life? Is it, uh, it is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, okay, so he, what is he saying? He's saying, instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. So what is he, what he's saying is it's not about, I want to do this. Uh, I know I have these dreams. It's not that that is wrong, but to involve God in the picture. Let God be part of your planning. Let it be a spirit-led planning. Right? So he's saying, let God be part of it. Let it not be something coming out of selfish ambition. But let God be part of it. So he's saying, you know, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this and do that. Right? Verse 16. But now you boast in your arrogance. So which means that even that statement, tomorrow and today, today or tomorrow we'll go there and do this, is coming from a place of arrogance, coming from a place of boasting and not humility. right? And not from a place of being led by God. It's not spirit-led. So saying, therefore, uh, and, and then all such boasting is evil. Okay, So that is what here, so the, in the first uh, Matthew 6 we saw about how worrying about it is not what God wants. Worrying about these needs. These needs are legitimate needs. God knows that we have, you know, we have these needs. Every human being has these needs. So God is not saying not to have these things, not to have these needs, not to work towards it. But definitely do not worry about it. Secondly, here we see don't boast. Don't boast. Don't be arrogant about the future and what you will do and what you will accomplish. But involve God. In the picture, he says, "If the Lord wills, we will live. We will do this." So, involve God in the picture. Submit everything to the will of God. Rely on God, and so on. Okay. Then uh, another kind of idea um, or mindset is that the Lord is anyway going to come soon. Okay. What is the point? <laughs> right. uh, what is the point in all this working and saying? Let's just wait for the Lord to return and. Just go back. <laughs> uh, everything, anyway, whatever we do will be a waste. It will be all these things. So let's just wait and go. So that's another mindset where, but uh, yes, the Lord's return is imminent. But also, we know that He commissioned us. He commissioned us to do certain things. He has unique plans for us, right? Till He comes, right? Till He comes, till He returns. So He has commissioned us, you know, go. Do this, teach people to observe all that I have taught you. So he has commissioned us you know, um, to make disciples, and he has commissioned us with gifts. He has commissioned us with call. He has commissioned us with the anointing. For what? For this purpose. Right? So it's not like he does. He doesn't want us to do anything. He doesn't, it's not like his will is that we be passive until he returns. So we need to. So yeah, at the end of it, we just need to understand that it's not uh, that the the work of planning is unscriptural or unspiritual or, uh, or unbiblical. No, it's not. It is very much there in scripture, right? and it is very much needed for each one of us in our churches, in our ministries, and even for us personally to function well, right? And we do it. You know, we, we we sometimes think about it and we do it. Maybe we don't call it a plan, but but all of us do it, right? Okay, so when we look at 
the very nature of God, we see that it is a characteristic. It is an attribute of God. Um, just like how we know that God is kind and God is good and God is loving. We see that God is a God who plans ahead. Okay, uh, For example, Romans 8, verses 28 and 29. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose, which means that God has a plan, a purpose, you know, for, and then according to that He calls. And for whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay, so we see that uh, God has a plan, God has a purpose, calling, everything for people, right? So we know that that's an attribute of God. That's the nature of God. Ephesians 1, you know, uh, verses 9 to 12. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Okay? Which, according to the mystery of his will, which he purposed in himself, which means he thought, he planned, he purposed in himself, that in the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ and so on, you know, the whole work of redemption, etc. So, um, Psalm 33, verse 11, the counsel of the Lord, which means the, the wisdom, the plan, the advice of the Lord uh, stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Right? So we have the Lord as an example, the Lord God as an example, that he's a God of order, that he's a God who plans, um, and, and, you know, he, in time, Right, within time, we know that he's outside of time, but he he steps into time, and then he has um, plans and purposes and so on. So, um, so if we were to function well as leaders, and uh, we are addressing it, you know, in leadership, so that this can be part of our, you know, functioning. Right, this can we we realize the value of it, and we plan. So, what is the opposite of planning? That are, uh, not planning, doing things arbitrarily, in random. Right? I, I get up one morning, I feel like it, and I do it. Right, and you know that's a kind of a mindset sometimes. You know, if I feel like it, I do it. If I don't feel like it, I won't do it. Right, and it's a very strong thing. Like um, you know, whatever feels good, you do it. Right, um, but if it's not, you're the master. Right, don't do it. And if you if you think that there will be chaos, there will be chaos in our lives because it'll be full of up and down, up and down all the time. Good mood, you do things. Bad mood, you don't do things. You don't even attempt. Right. So our life goes up and down based on our emotions. And definitely, if we are leading, if others, you know, uh, uh, if we are giving direction, if we are being influencers, right, we are influencing people for good. For the cause of the gospel, definitely we cannot afford to live that kind of a life. We are being responsible, yeah, you know, our others for others' lives and accountable and so on. So uh, we need to have planning. Okay. So what are some guidelines uh, that we can plan? You know? First of all, we said right. Uh, let's just quickly look at you know a plan, and we can apply it for our personal lives, church ministry. You know, if you're leading a team, we can apply it. First thing is, of course, to include God. Okay, that's the first thing we said, right? It's planning is not something which is apart from God, where we just put together everything according to our wisdom and then we say, finally, go to God for His approval. Stamp, right? God, you know, now we, we want your signature. Now we want your approval. No, it's not like that, right? It says Proverbs three and verse five: Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Verse six: In all your ways acknowledge Him. And he shall direct your path. So, so you see, you know, in all our ways we acknowledge, you know, in whatever we are considering and whatever we want to do, we acknowledge him. What does acknowledge mean? Huh? To take into consideration. Mm -hmm. You get, get into a room and you acknowledge who's there. So what does acknowledge mean? Recognize. Okay. See. Do you see? You recognize. 
and okay we have to yeah recognize is a very big very important word because when you are saying you acknowledge somebody's presence you're actually seeing and you're also recognizing and accepting yeah making them a part ah but you are acknowledging would mean recognize address right i come in and uh, you know and i say okay uh, okay sri radha is here uh, i recognize sri radha acknowledge and i've also you know address oh, i i just say whatever welcome or you know i'm acknowledging or maybe a you know in an informal gathering you're just nodding your head and saying hi you're acknowledging right so the word of god says in all your ways acknowledge whatever you're doing acknowledge the lord because he's letting be part of you what sir huh sorry sorry what um obey is secondary you know first of we're just saying that lord uh, thank you you you're here i acknowledge your presence the opposite of that would be to ignore i come in and i i just uh, i don't even I, i just come in look and there's no interaction there's nothing you know i just completely ignore neglect so acknowledge is to recognize and address and um, interact and all that right so in your all, all your ways acknowledge him what is the second part of that verse and he shall direct your paths okay so so that's the thing you know i'm not leaning on my own understanding i'm trusting in the lord i'm acknowledging the lord and the lord his desire is that he will, wants to direct our paths you know direct which means saying hey, this is better this is a good choice this is something okay do what you like here you know your heart is positioned well and go for it he shall direct your paths okay uh, let's look at this you know we acknowledging him by obeying his word by obeying his leading uh, by desiring what the that desiring that the lord jesus be glorified and um, by placing as priority what kingdom values are like in our own lives so these are there are several ways by which we can you know acknowledge uh, the lord right okay so in all your ways acknowledge him so as part of the planning you know just acknowledge the lord so do, let not your planning so then we we see the beauty of planning you know maybe you want to plan for your own life plan for your you know maybe your finances plan for whatever aspect of life acknowledge the lord Okay, because he wants to his desire is to direct your planning activity and also the implementation of the plan he wants to direct our paths right okay second one follow the leading of the spirit okay um we have the privilege of hearing the voice of the shepherd because we are the sheep and he's our shepherd right so uh, romans 8:14 says for as many are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god which means that i am a son and daughter of god so i have the privilege of being led by the spirit of god so choosing to be led by god's spirit choosing to hear his voice right uh, and so on right okay thirdly when we are planning is to understand the seasons okay so understand what season of life we are in when we plan things out okay you know maybe personally we could say okay am i a student am i a married person am i a professional working professional what season of life am i in? am i retired am i you know what season of life uh, we are in because our planning would actually be an integral part of that so we need to understand seasons right like for example i i, I remember having this conversation with this mother and uh, she was a young mother who used to be very active in church almost every and, the, and it was a very active church you know from where she came from so she was almost there every day like you know very active in church leading uh, certain things and so on and then she felt that everything had stopped because she was a young mother and you know the child really needed the attention and the care and so on so she felt 
so she felt as if she was worthless as a believer you know as a child of god she was like i i feel worthless you know i i don't know i used to do so many things she was feeling guilty she was condemning herself saying i used to be so active now i cannot or i'm not doing it i want to do i'm not able to then so we had this conversation about seasons you know what season are you in right what season are you in the fact that you have come out of a season and entered into another season understand that you can't do the same things right i can't do the same things which i used to do in a previous season i'm in a different season and a different season calls for different things to do and you know it's it's a, it's completely different when it comes to activities when it comes to what what i'm asked to do my responsibilities everything is different so and who who conveys me from one season to another it's god himself the scripture talks about you know he knows our times he holds our times in his hands right our seasons in his hands so so you know we had that conversation just to understand what season we are in so we will plan accordingly you know so so with every season comes responsibilities okay our roles are slightly changed okay so maybe you're a, you're a single person your responsibility or role will be different if you're a married person your your role if you're a parent your role will be different now who designs this is it's god who's designed right he's the is the is the master architect he's he's the one who's designed family he's the one who designed you know this married life or single whatever he's he's designed it therefore our planning has to be in line with that right so we can't say you know those days i used to do that now i want to go back to that you know uh, forget everything at home you know you guys do what you want i want to serve and i want to do it the way i used to do right doesn't work you have a certain responsibilities and who gave that responsibility it's god right so so understand the season so when we understand the season then we will be able to plan things with peace in our hearts right okay ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 to everything there's a season a time for every purpose under heaven and verse 11 i think this this is a lot of wedding cards have it he has made everything beautiful in its time right but the thing is they might even do it wrongly they may, you know sometimes they i've seen verse was like he has made everything beautiful in his time right but actually in its time right in in the time that is meant for it in its time he has made everything beautiful okay um so yeah understand the times understand the seasons when you're planning okay uh dare to dream okay uh, ephesians 3:20 now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us okay he is able to do it talks about god's ability he is able to do exceedingly abundantly and it says above all that we ask above all that we think okay so here's a responsibility of asking and thinking even imagining dreaming right so so the thing is you know do we dare to, certain things we don't even you know dare to think of because we say oh, i don't think it's for me or i don't think it's i'm capable of that right uh or maybe you have this burning desire to you know do these things but then you you know sometimes we limit saying uh i don't think i'm you know even in my lifetime i don't think i can do it achieve it and you know i don't, I don't think i'm capable okay so we don't even begin to pray we don't even begin to ask the lord the um, bible talks about it you know, he is able to do things abundantly above all that we ask or think so we need to have that ability to dare to dream right dream big have a big vision but maybe because of our experience maybe because of certain things that we have had those things are you know it, it could be fractured it could be hurt where we are saying okay i'm not going to ask i'm not going even going to think like that you know because i know what happened and uh, so i don't 
I don't want to. Right? I think you have a question. Yeah. Like, uh, as we are talking about day two dreams, or like, we can't dream everything. Also, right? We can't dream anything. Like, it should be like what we dream. It have to be uh, aligned with our gifts and talents, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. We have to dream according to what we can do. Sorry. Uh huh. Like according to what the ability or okay okay so the thing is this you know what we can do what our abilities are sometimes we put ceilings we put barriers no one has put it God has not put it but I've put it myself and that barrier could be because of a recent experience or whatever past experience whatever it could be I put a barrier. And I say that uh, this far, no more. It could be in the area of your call. It could be in the area of your gifting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so we are talking about in in what you have been called to do, in what you've been gifted to do. Okay, so, the next point is about that. If you look at it, you know, it's be realistic, be practical. It seems like <laughs> opposite of uh, daring to dream, but it's you know what we are called to do, what we are uh, you know dreaming to do, desiring to do, is always tempered with being practical and being realistic. Okay, so but the thing is, I'm just talking about the fact that okay, maybe you are gifted, maybe you are called, but you are not really pursuing God in that, right? To the extent to which what you can actually do, you just want to settle for a okay. You know, I just want to settle for a normal. I don't know. I, I don't know if you can call call it normal. I don't think we can call it normal because here the Bible talks about you know doing, going for it, pursuing because He's able to do right. So, so that is that is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So it's not wishful thinking. It's not also, you know, going in the area. Let's say, you know, um, maybe one is not gifted in that area, particular area, but I still want to do it because I I like it. You know, I just like it, and I just like the fact that you know this so and such and such a person is you know functioning like that, and I'm like, wow, I want to be that. Yeah. <laughs> so we should we should have a desire. Yeah, we should desire. Um, Okay, so there are there's a couple of things, right? One is, um, see, uh, well, God has called. Let's say you know we're thinking of the fivefold ministry. We're thinking of the gifts of the spirit. Gifts of the spirit we know is for all. Fivefold ministry is you know that some are called. Okay, and and God is called with something. You know, He knows this is what I fashioned you for, shaped you for, right? So, so if you know that this is something that He's called you for, but but then, what is the point in dreaming if it, if you know for sure this is what you're called for, and you can actually dream big in that, right? In that very area that you call for, you know, there's no limits to what you can do in God. You can, but then you, if you're shifting all that to another area, and you're dreaming about this, that is what we're talking about. Yeah, that's the thing. But the beautiful thing is this. You know, if you're dreaming wrong, God will tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? He'll say, okay, why don't you, you know, just make some adjustments. Uh -huh. God won't? You know, no, he'll just say, just shift. Just shift your, you know, your target is this. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, he just says, you know, he's just opening up, he's just opening up, uh, you know, avenues and opening up opportunities and say, you know, my son, my daughter, just... Go for it. You know, I'm opening up and then not this lot. This is boring. This is this I've done so many times. I want to I want to do this, you know. So that is what we're talking about when we say be realistic, be practical. Right. Okay, we shall stop here and then continue next class.